Sergeant Paul Gifford was late. And um, I sort of was a wise guy, and I told him he's late, and he said, well, Captain, uh, I'm sorry, but um, I lost my tank. And I said, uh, oh, boy, they were expensive as hell. You better go get that tank if you want. He said, well, the Germans took it. I said, well, now you better go back and get that tank. I mean, you can't go losing a tank. The Germans got bad, bad business. So uh, I got the usual laughter, and I said, what happened to Colonel so-and-so? He's going to give it to you. He said, he lost his artillery piece. I said, what's happening? He said, the Germans are pushing. Division headquarters, of which I was a part, was aware that there were, there were now an increase in, uh, in the artillery, enemy artillery fire and all that. But nothing terribly dramatic, except there was a hush that seemed to really and truly, you could feel a hush, as though the civilians sensed what we didn't comprehend. By Monday, refugees were streaming down the streets with their household possessions and their faces are absolutely grim and there's no greeting of any kind. And you know that you're looking at a classic kind of thing, refugees before the enemy. And one of the first things I did was to go up to headquarters up the hill. And there it looked as though it was a recently disturbed ant hill. People were running in all directions. Soldiers were running in all, at seemingly haphazard, jumping on vehicles that were, that were taking off. At that time, it was, there seemed to be nobody in, in charge. Nobody, nobody in charge. Uh, I, saw, I saw one higher officer absolutely lose his wits, and he seemed to be trying to crank a Jeep. There haven't been cranks on cars for a long time. He was just absolutely panic-stricken. And that disturbed me a lot. That, that shook me up. After we surrendered, the German corporal took me uh, forward, and then they put me on the hood of a car. I, I was sitting with my legs dangling over, over the grill, and he had a pistol to my head. And so we went up and down some hills, and I was like a trophy on the hood of his car with this pistol on my head. And, and to my absolute astonishment, I was looking at droves, at herds of beautifully uniformed, young, healthy-looking, well-fed, well-equipped German troops. And my heart sank. God, they did it. I mean, they surprised us. They've got stores of people that we didn't know about. Wow. And they came by, these young, good-looking uh, kids, uh, laughing at me uh, as a trophy. We had been surprised and were in trouble. <laughs>